Hi there. So section nine, we will discuss some of the sort of tools of the trade, the density of states um, and the constant energy surfaces, and we'll use that throughout the course uh, to determine the critical properties of band structure and then abstract that into other uh, material properties. All right, quick reminder, section seven, we calculated periodic potentials in one dimension. We came up with a chronic penny model uh, in section eight, we talked about a Brion zone, a reciprocal lattice that fully represents all the state information in the central region we call the Brion zone. All right, so now we're going to expand some of these um, concepts with some fundamental methods. All right, reminder again, in 1D, we have a periodic array, spatial array. We calculated Schrodinger's equation on that spatial array. And we needed a discrete set of points, k, to represent this. The number of k points really depended on the number of unit cells that we included. So the spatial um, distance between each k point was little delta k as uh, pi over 2 na. And we filled up these, well, we computed states. And each band had n states. In this case here, we have four bands. Now, as we expand this into two dimensions, we will get something similar. Here, I sketched for you a not a square a lattice, but a, a rectangular lattice, where A and B, the basis vectors, are slightly different in length. Now, that means the uh, Fourier transform of this, the invert, uh, the reciprocal space, is also asymmetric. It's still rectangular, but uh, as B here is smaller, then the longer A, the uh, uh, reciprocal space here as uh, pi over uh, B and minus pi over B is longer. So you have an elongated rectangle in the B dimension. All right. So in the one-dimensional system, we really had just one coordinate, say Kx. Here in um, two dimensions, we have two coordinates. So an EK diagram really is a surface in a given, in, at any given band. So if you want to think of, we're looking at this band here in the two-dimensional sense, we end up with a surface. Now, visualizing surfaces and getting information out of such surf surfaces is not necessarily easy, and it's not necessarily the best way to describe these surfaces. So what's often done is you can take a cut in, say, the kx direction. So here is shown as red. And you plot one of these cuts in one direction. Okay, so you can take one of these cuts, say in the positive kx direction, and plot them like this. And you can also cut in the other direction, and you keep one of the axes, because uh, not just a positive going one, and you plot it in ky. So since the structure is typically uh, symmetric, certainly in this case of a, rectang a rectangular system, you don't need both of these branches in red here or both of these branches in, in blue here. It is good enough to cut in, uh, take one of these branches in the crystal directions. And since um, uh, the lattice constants are different, also the axes here, pi over b and pi over a, are different. And notice that even though it looks symmetric here, um, the, the actual length is slightly different because uh, A and B are different, but you will often find that they are normalized to some length. And we'll see that in other plots of EK diagrams in three dimensions. So you take multiple cuts in multiple symmetry directions and you plot them on the same line plot and you vary the axes here on the horizontal and plot the quantities on the vertical axis. Another very important aspect that we deal with is a constant energy surface. In the 2D case, it's a constant energy line that would correspond to this green line over here um, at which there's, the energy is constant. So the vertical axis is the dispersion is the energy. And if we take a slice uh, orthogonal to that axis, we basically get a sort of a ring-like structure. So that ring-like structure would look like this, but since the kx and ky are on a slightly uh, 
are not identical. They are on a rectangular rectangle, so this uh, circle is going to be more like an ellipsoid. Well, that wouldn't be unusual, and we'll see more ellipsoids like that in, a, in more realistic structures. So, but what you could do is identify, for example, here uh, this yellow square with what is on the ky axis here. And you can also identify the rectangle here as being here, right? So the information that you have is as such identical, but the representation of that information is different. So that's the key thing to understand that when you have an EK diagram where it's a line cut in certain directions, you plot um, along a K and you observe different energies. It is often extremely useful to take a cut along a constant energy and then have to plot that constant energy in a space that is spanned open by Kx and Ky in this two-dimensional uh, system. Again, we'll expand that into three dimensions, but these are really critical elements to explore what a two- and three-dimensional uh, dispersion or EK diagram would look like in order to study the slopes and the, the extents of these bands. So with that, we're going to start uh, diving into another concept uh, that is called density of states. And here we will measure how many states in a differential slab of energy can exist. And we'll do that in the next segment.